Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is some more hints, tips and settings for your flying pleasure on the Xbox. Things like how to increase the sim rate. As you can see the world is zipping by me at a lot quicker rate and I can slow that back down to normal again or speed it back up. There we go. And things like map settings, some hints and tips on the world map. Things that you may not have realised are there. So let's not dilly dally, let's get on with the video. First tip I want to show you and share with you is increased sim rate. It's basically accelerating time. So if you're flying along on a long journey, you want to accelerate time. Indeed, you can do this. You've, you've been able to do this from day one, but I'm using the Xbox controller to do this. So I'm going to set up a couple of buttons. Just going to go to my options, control options, all with the Xbox controller. And increase sim rate and decrease sim rate is under miscellaneous. Ensure your filter is on all, showing every single possible setup and button combinations and mapping that you're able to do. When you're in all, go to miscellaneous. And if you just scroll down this list with your right analog stick, sure you know I'll all know how to do that. You've got sim right here. It's not the one we want. Keep going down. We want the first word to be increase. There you go. Increase sim rate. Now for this, I'm going to set a couple of buttons that are not set up by default, I believe. I'm using the right bumper. Look at your gamepad. You've got two bumper buttons left and right and two trigger buttons beneath them. The right bumper button in combination with the D-pad up to increase my sim rate. So right bumper and D-pad up. So I'll go to increase sim rate, click in that box, click in start scanning. Press my A button there and right bumper and D-pad up. There you go. That's registered. So that's now increase my sim rate. Validate. I'm just going to press my Y button to apply and save. Then we can scroll down this list and decrease sim, uh, sim rate. So likewise, I'm going to use my right bumper and D-pad down. By the way, it's up to you where you put these. You can put them on one button presses if you have enough buttons or you don't have buttons assigned to anything else. I've got all my buttons assigned to something else. There's only so many buttons on the gamepad, of course, and you might be in a similar situation. So decrease sim rate, right bumper and D-pad down. So de decrease sim rate, go here, press your A button. Go to start scanning, press your A button. Right bumper, D-pad down. That's picked up and registered, that's fine. Validate and Y button to apply and save. That's applied now to my profile. It's just called new. But that's okay. Go back. Resume. Now, let's just go down to this display. I do have a mouse attached just so I can point something out. You don't need a mouse attached for this. I've just got it so I can point it out to you. You can see here this clock ticking by. You can see the second seconds ticking by at a certain rate. This is normal speed. Oops. Let's just get that mouse back to where it was. That's normal speed. So look at the seconds ticking by. I can time that. So it seems a bit quicker than real life, but they're going by. Bump, 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 bump. That's fine. So if I increase the sim rate, right bumper, D-pad up. You can see those seconds ticking by a lot quicker now. If I was flying, the world would be zipping round, uh, around me. Right bumper, D-pad up again. And now you can see they're going by a lot quicker. To get it back to normal, right bumper, D-pad down once, twice. And just time it if you're ever unsure what your sim rate is set at. Initially, before you do anything with sim rate, just time those seconds going by. I can see that's normal now. 
So I'll tell you what, the ultimate test is in the air, isn't it? I've got a simple course set up. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm just going to set an altitude. I've got a course set up from an airport just outside London into London city centre. Let's go back and I'll throttle up, release the parking brake. Don't have flaps, I don't believe. Cessna 172, so flaps are not on by default. That's good. Being pulled to the left, that's pretty normal. Just get up to speed, take off. And when I'm in a climb, I'll set the autopilot. That will do. Up we go. Just trim up so I'm climbing rather than descending. It feels strange to be back with the x -Gut box controller, but it's still usable. I'm going to press my Y button. That's what I've got my autopilot master set to. It will follow the course and keep us going. Now you can see the world around us is moving at a normal rate. Let's increase the sim rate. Right bumper and D-pad up. Look at that. You can see it's moving a lot quicker. Let's put it back to normal now. There you go. That's normal speed. And to ensure, like I said, it's normal speed, I'll look down at the seconds here. Down here. And I can see they're ticking by... Normally, that's normal. Let's increase the sim rate a lot, maybe four times. Yikes! Uh, now you can see we're just zooming about. We're going to be in central London. Can the sim keep up with us? <laughs> oh, should we do another London to Paris in ten minutes this time with sim rate? It's possible in the Cessna 172. Let's just decrease that back to normal. I think I pressed it four times, but just to ensure I'll look down here. I'd see my seconds. Let's just decrease my throttle. I'm over revving the engine there. Come on, back you go. Uh, yeah, I can see my seconds ticking away normal. So that's one way you can set up how to increase the sim rate. It's not ideal. Ideally, you should have a display on the screen saying what sim rate you're in. With the Xbox, we don't have that. With PC, I'm going to link a video in the top right. It's FS Sim Rate Bandit. It's absolutely the best third party add-on it's free as well so you don't pay for it a third party add-on that you can use and it just tells you what your sim rate is and it's absolutely brilliant with pc flight simulator with the xbox it's more a case of coming down here if you're not sure what your sim rate's doing look at your seconds they're ticking away normally i'll increase that you can see they're ticking away a lot quicker now decrease to put it back to normal that's the way to do it with the Xbox. Anyway, let's move on with more tips. Okay, so for these next set of hints and tips, it's all going to be to on the world map. There's a lot more you can do here than a lot of people may realise. Some of you may know this, some of you may not. I'm going to use my cursor. I'm on the Series S still using the gamepad only. Going to come down to this bottom menu here where it's got more. You can press the button just below the X to the right, in fact, the two squares. But I'll come down with the cursor and press that. And I'll use the shortcut here where you, where you can see at the bottom there, open filters. Press the Y button. It will open up some filters. Now, I'm not going to go through all these. And some of these you may know they're quite self-explanatory, like the top one there, background map. Satellite, you can see the terrain features where you, wherever you are in the world, whether there's mountains or hills or cities. You can click that to IFR, so it's just like a two-tone map. I'm not showing you any detail, just the IFR map. And you've got things like blend as well. I prefer it on satellite. Weather layer. If I close that box a second, zoom out, you can see the clouds around the world. If you don't want clouds showing, open up your filters and you could turn that off. An interesting one here though is precipitation. So if I close that, you can see essentially where it's raining around the world, where there's sort of rainfall around the world currently. So if I want to go over here, for example, set up a flight where it's raining in live weather. You can go and do that. So that's quite an interesting one. Let's open the filters. I prefer that personally on clouds. Got things like wind effect, the ground wind effect, low and high. So if you want to see how hard or not it's blowing at the moment, you can go and do that from here. 
I'll leave that off for now. Friends is quite an interesting one. Let's just zoom in over... Oops, don't know what happened there. <laughs> over London. I'm on live multiplayer at the moment. Flight conditions, all players on the North Europe server. For zoom in, regardless of whether or not these people are on, on, are on my friends list, I can... Whoever's on that North Europe server flying in this area, you can see them. If I want to, I can go and join the big man here. Mr. T. Big Man. <laughs> Great name. Set his departure. Go and fly. I can go and join him. Go and spy on him. I'm not going to do that, don't we? Let's just click back out of that. Go back to uh, more. Press the shortcut there. Uh, I don't want to reset. Go back to more. And open filters. Now, an interesting one here, though. If you've got friends... I've got a fair few friends on the Xbox and PC. Only one is online at the moment. That's Parrot. If I want to find her, instead of zooming in every detail all over the world trying to find her, which will take forever, I can open the filters, put friends on, come out of this box, zoom out, and I can just wander around the world till I see... A sort of green icon which is there there's parrot she's near los angeles i think she's paused i did try and spawn on her just before recording as she's paused so as soon as i spawn in i fly past her but if, if you want to you can't communicate with your friends for some reason who are flying but you want to fly with them turn that friends on click on the person set his departure and click on fly you can go and join them Wherever they are around the world. So that's quite a useful feature. Let's go back over the southeast of England. Open the filters. No, I don't want to reset. More open filters. Click friends off for now. You've got third party contents as well there. I think that is you've got add-ons for the world map. Uh, I believe maybe someone can give me more information about this third party content down in the comments. And that will just make sure you're still watching. Now say you wanted to set up a flight route. You want to set up a route for your friends to fly, but you don't want grass runways or water runways or snowy runways. These are all on by default. If you turn them off, now let's just see grass runways. Turn them off, they will disappear from your world map. Turn them on. So let's just, uh, let's just come out of that and zoom in a bit further there. And it will give us all the grass runways as well. Open the filters, turn off the grass run runways. But you can see some of those are disappearing from the map. I leave them on because I like to land on all different runways. But if you don't want them showing on the world map, that's how you do it. Points of interest, self-explanatory. You can see landmarks. So let's just come out oh, over London. You can see all the landmarks in London there. You don't want them showing. Turn them off. I keep them on personally. And cities and fauna. The ones I really want to get to, sort of meat and veg in some ways of this world map, are these three at the bottom. Air spaces. Turn them on. It will come out of this box. It will give you the air spaces around your specific location. Kind of like an air controller type configuration. So quite interesting. Open the filters again. I'll turn them off for now. These two are very interesting. Say you wanted to set up a course. Now in... Yeah, I guess let's just go somewhere more remote. Where the main... There we go. That seems more remote. Now, say I wanted to set up a course from here. Set his departure to here. Set his arrival. And in terms of points of interest, there's not many around here. But I wanted to get a, a fix in somewhere else. There's a couple of ways of doing this. You can open your filters... Turn on fix an RNAV position report and it will put a lot more kind of like nav aids and nav features in the map, on the world map. So you can see now we've got a lot more. Let's just go back and turn them off just so you can see. Turn them on. You can see now we've got a lot more sort of uh, points where you can fix onto. So if I wanted to do a different course, for example, I wanted to fix on this instead of that. I can add this. Select here. NA501, press my A button and add it to my flight plan. So that's one way of doing it. In fact, let's go back to filters and turn them off. 
you don't need to do that at all, but it, it is an option. Say, for example, I wanted to come on this airport from this direction. I can just click anywhere on an open space, press the A button. It will create a custom uh, waypoint for me, and I can just add that. And there you go, I can fly in from that direction. So there's different ways of doing that. It's just an option, and it's quite interesting interesting if you wanted to follow real world uh, nav points for example let's just reset that i don't want that flight plan and the other one which is very interesting indeed only something i've learnt myself fairly recently i did a video of doing a manual ils into an airport and i use an external browser to find the ils frequency People commenting, a couple of people commenting, Wombo Way was one of them, Dave, one of my Discord members, m mentioned that you can actually, and Russen was the other one in fact, you can actually click on an option in these filters. Let's go back to more, open filters, which is nav aids. And you can see which airports, let's now come out of that, around the world, have ILS or not. So this could be very useful if you do, if you just want to stay in Flight Simulator and you don't want to open a browser. Heathrow Airport, for example. Turning on, let's just turn that on and off now, just to show you. Turn it off, that's how it is normally. Turn it on. You can see new boxes have now appeared around Heathrow Airport. If I click on one of them, to the right here, it will give me the ILS frequency and the type localizer DME. So if the airport's got ILS, it will bring up this box, this uh, information. If you click in one of those boxes, let's click on this box. Different ILS frequency and still a localizer DME. Click on this box. Actually, are they all similar? Ah, there you go, that's a different one. So there you go. Obviously, it's going to depend whether the airport has ILS or not and with that on on the uh, filters so with that turned on nav aids if you go to an airport which doesn't have ILS you won't get those boxes there you go that that airport doesn't have it I believe Kenley airport yeah doesn't have them Obviously, places like London City, Heathrow, all the major hubs. Yep, London City got it. Let's just click on one of the boxes near London City. Give me the ILS for that runway and the type as well. So that's quite useful. So there you go. Those are my some more hints, tips and settings for your flying pleasure. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Give it a thumbs up if it's been useful to you. I have got another Xbox specific video in mind that will be released sometime in the near future. Subscribe for more and I'll see you soon.